Leo, welcome to your September 2018 Astro Update. It's Rena here. So in summarizing what I see for you in September in terms of the main influences, one of them I would say has to do with the money that you earn and the other area has to do with your relationships. Now you couldn't make a a case and say, well, what else is there in life? You know, the money that we earn is connected to our careers, right? And, and usually, and our relationships, but specific relationships, family relationships, and, and your love life, uh, committed partnership. I'll get into all of that right quick. So as the month begins with the sun in Virgo, this in itself is your second house of earned income. And the sun in this house, Leo, really puts a lot of emphasis, attention on it, and creativity. You know, I always associate the sun with creativity and just focus. And when I say focus, I guess I mean, yeah, energy. You know, energy like um, the sun is, it's like the center of the universe for you right now, this area. And um, actually, Mercury goes into this sector as well on the 5th. And that adds your mental power where you might be crunching numbers and maybe writing things down, constructing some kind of a budget or at least seeing where your money is going, researching it, having a lot of mental activity in this sector that's very practical, that Taurus rules in the universal chart. And so there's a, a very grounded uh, start to the, the month of September for you, Leo. You just are coming off of your birthday month, and maybe you've been celebrating a lot. And now you're getting down to brass tacks in a way. So as the month begins, Mercury is in your sign. And this can be really good for people when they are trying to promote themselves in some way. And the typical ways we promote ourselves are when we are looking for a job, and we have to communicate who we are, what we stand for. Uh, to potential employers. Or even if you work for yourself, if you're looking for new clients, you have to be able to communicate who you are in a very brief sort of way. And there's a consistency there. Mercury in the first house can also make you very chatty and willing to communicate in the first place. Not that you have any trouble with that. It's just that it makes you that much more willing to do it. But it's about selling yourself. And same thing with relationships. When you are really connected to who you are in the sense of being able to tell other people about that, you stand a better chance of making a good first impression. Until the ninth of the month, Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, is in your third house, which is a friendly angle, a sextile to you, Libra. Venus rules Libra, and so Venus is uh, totally comfortable here, can function in a top-notch sort of way. And Venus is in the sector that involves your siblings, your local environment, and the internet. So Love can come to you through any of these avenues. In terms of your siblings, what I see here for the month of September is when Venus goes into the fourth house of home and family on the ninth, it's going into the house that deals with your mother and your family of origin. So that's an extension of that third house in the sense of like, okay, you're, you're talking about brothers and sisters and cousins. And now we're talking about parents, especially the mother and maybe even your home 
hometown. It could be your current family that you have made as an adult. But there's a sense of harmony here. Venus can bring harmony. So if you've had any kind of falling out with either your siblings or maybe your whole family, you had a period of time, Leo, where you were just um, kind of away from them. And maybe there was some kind of specific falling out. Venus is about making peace and harmony possibly restored. And also, I must note that Jupiter is direct in this house, in this fourth house. So Venus accompanies Jupiter. That could be a really good opportunity for money when it comes to real estate, for instance, or from your mother. So that can be a very advantageous time for you with both of these benefic planets in your home sector. On the very same day that Venus goes into your fourth house, on the ninth, there's a new moon in Virgo, that second house, earned income. And I would say that the second and the fourth houses are both kind of practical houses in their own way. One involves land, one involves real estate, and there could be some connection there as well. Maybe it's a new day for you in terms of some of your possessions. But it's funny because when I'm talking about possessions, I could be talking about uh, land with the second house, and then maybe you're building a new house on that land. So it can be very lucrative for you in this month when it comes to domestic affairs and even a connection to the money that you earn if you're doing something with that land that involves making money, such as some kind of a farm or a home business that involves the, the actual house. So um, that's really uh, coming in strong for you in September, Leo. And um, the very next day on the 10th, Mars goes into Aquarius. Now, the reason that this is important is that if you recall back in late June, <laughs> it's funny how quickly time goes by, we had a Mars retrograde, and I believe it was 10 degrees of Aquarius. Well, it took two months, but it eventually got back into Capricorn, a late degree of Capricorn, and went direct in late August, and as September rolls around on the 10th, Mars goes back into Aquarius. So it's going back, uh, still gaining degrees from when it retrograded. So we call that still the shadow period until that actual date. And But this is important because Aquarius is your opposite sign. And this is going to mean that Aquari that Mars goes into the seventh house once again, where it was when it retrograded. And so there might have been some kind of situation that occ occurred with a relationship that now is revisited. But this time, Mars is direct, and this conflict is resolved. Granted, the resolution of the conflict could mean that you have left a partner. This would have been probably something that occurred in the last couple of months, however, where you have decided that you're tired of the same old fights and you just walked away from a relationship. But this would be like a, a marriage or a long-term committed partnership. Well, it doesn't have to be long-term, but a committed partnership. And you may have walked away from it, and now you are looking to move forward in your life when it comes to relationships. Not necessarily that you want to have a new relationship, but just that you have a new, maybe a new attitude, and you feel more powerful in control of yourself in this area of life. And so then we have, it's funny because I'm thinking to myself, there's got to be some transits in between the 10th and the 21st. That seems kind of odd. 
One thing that I do want to mention that I haven't written down here is that Saturn goes direct in Capricorn on the 6th. So I'm kind of um, backing up a little bit. And this happened to occur in your sixth house where you've had Mars as well and Pluto. Now this could have indicated that this was in the house of work. So this could have been some kind of karmic situation. And I would add any kind of situation with authority of figures um, included in this, because in my opinion, especially if you have found a pattern, Leo, where you have had trouble dealing with people um, in positions of authority and maybe even had problems with authoritarian parents growing up, that this type of a retrograde, Saturn retrograde, can really hit hard in your work sector with a boss, for instance. And it can feel like you don't want to even progress. And so this will be a welcome relief when Saturn goes direct in this house. Hopefully you've thought about this in some way of perhaps how reactive, if you've, if you're kind of a person who is reactive, um, Leo is a fire sign and, you know, can certainly raise their voice and have a temper if something bothers them enough. But Leos are leaders, natural leaders. And depending upon how you were raised, if you had any kind of abuse of power from a parent, this could rub off on you the wrong way and either make you a little bit too rebellious in terms of accepting somebody else's authority or being a petty tyrant yourself. And this is one of the shadow aspects of Leo uh, specifically is bullying tactics, feeling arrogant, feeling like um, you're better than somebody else and lording over someone if you are in a position of authority, for instance, which is what a petty tyrant is all about. So there may be some kind of lesson that has kind of, has revealed itself in the last few months. So April, May, June, July, August, September. So that's like five months ago that uh, Saturn went retrograde in this house. And if you've had any kind of slowdowns with your work in any kind of way, even with your motivation, maybe you feel like you're a little bit out of sync, then things should start to feel more uh, forward moving as September continues. And again, we have these other planets that are retrograde as well. And that can be, feel like a sense of relief. 2018 has seen a lot of retrograde activity for us. And uh, it's not done yet, because we're going to have Venus retrograding in October. So this is why September is an important month if you're trying to launch something and definitely worth thinking about. But you may have been feeling kind of in the doldrums and unmotivated. And, and so now you're, you're having a, a stationing Saturn, Saturn stationing direct, and this may make things a lot, a lot more, um, ambitious for you because Saturn is all about discipline and ambition and things like that. So that's good because that'll help your work life. So I'm just going to continue. I think I saw something when I was compiling this list and I may have left it out, but oh, well, I think it, it's okay. So I wanted to say about Mars going into Aquarius in that seventh house. Um, this could indicate that 
perhaps you were in a bit of um, a break in the battle, so to speak, with a marriage partner. Maybe you were even separated, legally separated if you were married. And perhaps you reunited and you're living together again, and then it starts up again. Now, this is not going to be for all Leos. This is only for those people who actually believe in magical thinking in the negative connotation, which is that, hey, we're separated, we're not together, I really wish that we were together, now we're together again and everything's supposed to change when neither party has admitted that they need to change. So that's what I mean by magical thinking. Nothing was ever really resolved. So it's kind of like a little bit unreasonable under those circumstances to think that anything would change. And um, so when people kind of act shocked that their partner has remained how they are, it's a little bit disingenuous to me because I'm wondering why they thought it would be different. Mars is physical attraction. And so if you and your significant other have been more like <laughs> um, roommates than lovers, this could really make you have a lot of sexy time to quote Borat and be um, like rabbits. And so that could be actually a nice thing about Mars in the seventh house. Maybe you're doing a lot of physical activities together. Uh, when Mars was in your sixth house, you may have implemented a new um, actual workout routine, Leo, or something. Maybe you decided to start walking long distances or hiking, and now you have enlisted your partner to help you, or maybe jogging, and you've enlisted your partner to help you so that both of you are, are accountable to one another. And so your marriage is getting a workout in a good way in terms of physical fitness. On the 21st, Mercury goes into the Libra, the third house. And this is good for anything to do with studying or teaching because Mercury rules this house. And it's in a fellow air sign. So that's good because uh, Gemini rules this house in the universal chart. And so there's a compatibility there. And um, this could be about talking to somebody romantically um, that you meet online, per perhaps. Venus has been in this house until the 9th. And now on the 21st, we have Mercury here. So you could be, you might have fallen in love with somebody and it's a virtual romance and now you're talking all the time. This can be great for, as I said, um, teaching and learning and maybe both. So if you're trying to get a teaching certificate and you are studying a lot, this is the house of communication. So anyone who is endeavoring to do anything in this field including have a blog or a YouTube channel, this could be the time that really makes you want to do it. And the very next day, the sun goes into this house as well. This is the equinox time. And this is an important time during the car, the, the sun going into the cardinal signs marks the four seasons. And in the Northern hemisphere, this is the season, the official begin, uh, beginning of autumn. And uh, so I'm assuming it's spring in the Southern Hemisphere, but definitely new beginnings in that area. Again, the sun is in that third house. So the attention goes from the practical to more of the mental. And then on the 24th, we have a full moon in Aries, only one degree of Aries, but this is a fellow fire sign. And this is going to be your ninth house, Leo. And the ninth house is the God house and the house of expansive uh, thought 
and movement in the form of travel, world travel, actually. It's the house of the higher mind, whether it's university or some kind of yoga training, anything that would be a spiritual pursuit, but something that maybe has a curriculum or some kind of organized material, because the ninth house is more like organized religion. For instance, the twelfth house is kind of like your unconscious mind in the spiritual dimension itself. It's not organized into different dogmas and things like that, you know, ways of thinking. Now, this is the full moon here. So this could be like some kind of a a download or revelation regarding these matters. If you are somebody who is not particularly religious or spiritual, you may have this idea or memory because the night, because a full moon can be about um, even dreams and psychic tendencies but you may just have this eureka moment that that uh, connects with the you know the idea of god an example would be let's say that you've been kind of like against these this kind of area and per- perhaps you were forced to go to a religious school growing up and you experience a lot of negativity through that, that kind of, contra- you know, that not kind of, that totally contradicted everything that they were telling you. A lot of fear mongering, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. You may just naturally have been cynical about it and then you have this either a spiritual experience or just this, you're connecting the dots that you don't have to believe in one particular dogma, one particular organized religion that you can believe in a creator and realize that it, there's a great possibility that those religions are all created to create division. At least, you know, we could say that they have that tendency, whether or not a person actually finds solace in them. Because I know that there are people that really love their particular organized religion and they wouldn't have it any other way. And I respect people for that. But other people have felt abused by these systems. And you may feel that, oh, yeah, you know, I don't have to throw away God just because I don't want to believe in an organized system. I can still have spirituality in my life. And maybe you go to some workshop that that kind of brings this home to you in some way. So I think it's very important um, to be aware of what comes up for you at the end of the month, at, at the time of that full moon, because it can be very liberating, actually. Full moons can be times of purging, and you can purge these old belief patterns that don't serve you regarding um, the fear-mongering, the shame associated with different philosophical uh, frameworks and embrace a new paradigm. Okay, that's what I have for you, Leo. So if you would like your own personal um, reading that includes looking at the astrological trends in your specific chart for the next 12 months, because obviously this is a general look at things. This is not going to necessarily fall neatly with the dates that I mentioned, because everyone's uh, sun or rising sign is at a different degree, and uh, it won't be in the same house. So... I'll link my nail chart interpretation for you in case you're interested. I also look at your personality traits, your patterns, talents, and things like that. It can be very affirming if you're the kind of person who needs somebody who doesn't know you 
And if I point out something that might be a talent of yours or something that you feel is what you came here to accomplish, but you don't feel supported by that, uh, based on people around you or circumstances that have occurred, um, that can feel very, I don't know, I think it can feel very validating. I know that that happened with me in my own chart when I learned how to read my own chart, is that I, I saw a lot of things that I just kind of brushed aside. Oh, yeah, you know, never even considered becoming an astrologer or really seriously being anything other than whatever the kind of career tracks are placed before us by, you know, well-intentioned people, but we don't always fit in neatly into those boxes or those patterns, do we? Sometimes we really like to color outside of the lines. And I know because I'm a Sagittarian, I'm a fellow fire sign. I understand fire signs and what they're all about. So uh, I'll link that particular reading below, but I do wish you a wonderful September, Leo. Bye.